Okay, so now I'm going to go into some of the downsides, and uh, I'll um, start with my saga, I guess. Um, I've been trying to use, or get my, or to know enough, or have the tools available to be able to use uh, Linux in an accounting firm. I would say now it's we're going on um, eight years, maybe. It may, be, it may be as much as 10, I, I just don't remember. I know I got my first box of Linux, I think, in 2001, so it's probably 8, 9, somewhere in there. Anyway, a couple years here and there, immaterial for us CPAs, I guess, right? And um, the first uh, distribution that I tried was, was Red Hat. I didn't like the feel of it, and I ended up hearing about SUSE, and I tried it, and I stuck with SUSE Linux from version 7.2. Three through about nine, then I just didn't upgrade for a while until finally, you know, you're kind of locked out of your options. Or eleven, no, actually I went up through eleven. SUSE is at version version number twelve, but I've been dissatisfied with SUSE since probably version ten, and I've been looking for another alternative. And then out of absolutely nowhere, Ubuntu showed up, and out of all the environments that I've worked in, this is my second favorite. But the reason why I'm not in SUSE now is because it has some serious problems that really tend to suck time. And sometimes in, in, when you're using Linux, you can end up losing an awful lot of time just trying to do one thing. And so you're gonna, at least going to want to have some familiarity with how it works in general and then uh, have some... Um, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> time under hat, uh, in which you've um, experienced different setups. You've gone through an upgrade, and you know what may or may not happen. Now, let me explain what happened uh, in my upgrade here. So I, I, I've switched over a different different system, and this envir environment here is called GNOME, and I'm used to using an environment called KDE, which I may have flashed a little bit here and there over here. Um, I think it's the screensaver to come up, and this this, this is m much more Windows-like to me, and um, you know I could I feel like I I get to places and do things a lot easier. Like that's a share on my server. I'm there already, but I also have it mounted. You know for for running Wine apps. There's my Wine app. Okay, it's just got a bit of a different look to it, and. and yeah, it'll throw these drives on the directory, but there's just it's a little bit not used to it. Okay, so it takes a little bit. At times, you may find that your distribution of choice may not work for you anymore, um, for whatever reason. And SUSE doesn't work for me anymore. Um, I happen to have, as you you've seen, and I guess I'll just reboot to show you. I I have a I tend to like to also just look into what the options are as to what you can do. Now, this happens to be a Linux kernel. We've, you know, we've seen Windows 7 in action over, <laughs> over on my other one. Now, here, here happens to be, I'll just boot into Haiku because it's so fast. Here, here's another. Anyway, so if you have, a, I, I'm doing more than one operating system. I have um, six different kernels right now I can boot into and one including Windows, this this kernel happens to be Haiku. This this environment, I think, actually has the most promise in some respects. So they can get networking in there, and um, they they fix a few things um, in the background or are able to work around things that I found limiting for myself that may not be limiting to them. I think this would be a much friendlier environment for people to work in. Um, Anyway, so if you're, but at least you're going to be able, you're going to be dual booting until such time as you can leave and start using Linux, stay with Linux with confidence. You, you know that Windows is going to be there, so you can run that that tax app, or you can run, you know, the newer version of QuickBooks Pro that won't install in Wine or whatever it happens to be. It's a waiting game, just you know, until we get enough people to work together to try to um, to get the wanting to move along fast enough to get caught up, 
so we can have our apps so maybe someone will think about porting their apps over to Linux or whatever it is they're using uh, by the way Haiku doesn't have one doesn't have wine right now due to one of the limitations at least for me and it sounds like even the people that are working on Haiku have that limitation they can't get wine to work because it doesn't use uh, I think because it doesn't use X11 in the background X11 is just another way to present a graphical user interface to the user but um, some of the things, some of the common things that happen when you upgrade are they, is that the developers out there may change some very, uh, very basic bit of functionality because they just felt like going in that direction and it may cause you some issues. And one issue may be, um, for example, the bootloader. They decided at one point they decided they were going to change the, the way you configure the bootloader. In fact, let me go back into Linux and talk about configurations. Um, this is just so Haiku, how fast Haiku is. Um, <coughs> so, in Linux land, Ubuntu, this version of Ubuntu, which is the latest version of Ubuntu, and I think maybe even the version previous to it, and the reason why you want to get a later version is because if you want to install the newer version of the apps that you like to use in Linux, then it's got to be compiled with a new version of GLIBC. GLIBC. You can't just take an app from Ubuntu, well, you may be for Ubuntu, but I know for SUSE, you couldn't take a, a SUSE 7 binary and just install it without an issue, and SUSE 11 or something like that, even though it's only been out for, you know, the, the time span's only about four years. Well, uh, the, this new version of Ubuntu decided that uh, they're going to use something called Grub2. And the way you configure Grub2 is completely different than the way you configure uh, Grub1, which I had gotten used to but didn't really like. I thought it was a bit kludgy. And basically the way Grub1 would be configured is you go into a file that was called menu.list in here. And you would, um, in fact, if I can get to my red hat, my fedora, sorry, um, directory I can show you what that looks like because I ended up controlling my booting from Red Hat here. Um, there's Fedora. Okay, there's boot. Oh, and the boot and grub. And there is my menu list file and I hopefully I'll be 